In this video, you'll learn a few ways to automate Slack using Zapier. Slack is one of the most useful Zapier integrations in my opinion, because there's just a lot of cool things uh, you can do with it. Now, just a quick note that this is not a Zapier tutorial. If you have never ever used Zapier before, you might wanna check out my Zapier tutorial to start with, as it walks you through from the very beginning stages. And I'll link that up below in the description as well as uh, showing on the screen now. If and I'm also trying a new video format here today. I'm just going to show you a really basic trigger setup and a really basic action setup in Zapier with Slack. Uh, and then just walk through a whole bunch of cool examples that you might want to try. So let's get into it. If you want to learn more cool ways to automate your business with Zapier and get more productive, hit that red subscribe button below. First things first, I always like to start trying to work out what's possible in Zapier uh, at the integrations page for whatever app you're using. So in this case, I'm on the Slack integrations page. I'll link this up in the description below as well, or you can just search for like Zapier Slack and you'll get here. Uh, and then scrolling all the way down the bottom to see what triggers actions and searches are available. Now there's a lot here. I'm not gonna go through every single one of them. Uh, just a few of the uh, cool ones that I think uh, make good use cases uh, for Slack. You know, so just looking through these, you can kind of start getting an idea of what's possible. So we can trigger a workflow in Zapier whenever a public message is posted in any channel, uh, when new channels are created, if you save a message, now this one's really cool, new pushed message. I'll show you this one. So this is an option that shows up in Slack uh, where you can actually uh, fire a workflow for a particular uh, message that's arrived just by clicking a button. So that's really cool. And reaction added uh, is really cool as well. So we'll go through some of those. Over on the action side, uh, there's a few you can see here. So sending uh, channel messages automatically, setting reminders for yourself, inviting people to channels. So yeah, we'll have a look at a couple of these. I'll just give you a quick example in my Slack as well. So here's a channel I have in our Slack called Sign Up Party for our product content snare. So every time someone signs up for a paid plan, we get a little notification just to say, hey, someone someone signed up and it says uh, what level plan they're on. So this is kind of fun to see and just provides a kind of motivation every time someone signs up. And likewise, when anyone signs up for my course on how to use Zapier, I get a little message here as well. Again, it's just kind of motivation and cool to see, and this is a really, really easy automation to set up. Okay, so now let's go ahead and set up a workflow. So I'm just going to set up a Zap or a Zapier workflow that uh, stores any Slack messages that I save, right? So here's just a test message in Slack. If I add this to my saved items, maybe I want that to go into my Evernote or one of my note-taking apps, whatever you happen to be using. Maybe you wanna put it on a spreadsheet. Uh, the workflow is going to be pretty much the same. So I'm gonna get rid of that. And then we're gonna go over here uh, to where I have started creating a new Zap. So I haven't touched anything yet. I'm literally just creating a new workflow. So here I'm gonna search for Slack and we're gonna trigger on a new saved message. I've already connected my account. If you've never done this before, uh, you'll just have to go through. There'll be a button showing here to connect your account. Really simple. I'm sure you've done this kind of thing before uh, whenever you've integrated apps, um, but yeah, you just follow the prompts. Otherwise you're selecting your account and we're gonna test a trigger. And hopefully that one that I just saved shows up. Yeah, you can see the test is text. Cool, so continue through. That's the triggers finished now. So whenever a new message is saved in Slack, let's add it to our Evernote. And maybe I just wanna have one note that has all of the things that I've saved. So we've got append to note here. So you might wanna create a new note for each one. Uh, but in this case, I think I'd prefer to put them all in one note. So I'll continue through choose my Evernote account. Again, if you haven't connected one before, you'll have to do that. Choose my notebook, just my basic one here. And then I'll show you this note that I've set up in Evernote. So it literally just says uh, Slack notes, right? So this is a note we've set up. I'm gonna copy that and put it in the title. So now we have to say what we wanna put in that message. So maybe we'll say new message saved on, and we want the date. So I'll link this article up uh, separately, but this is a special way to get the current date uh, into a uh, zap. So I'm just gonna copy that little uh, thing out, 
paste it in there. Uh, in the channel, so we maybe we want to know what channel it came in on, uh, from what person maybe wrote it. And then we put in the actual text uh, that was in the message. So if I continue and test, we should see that note update. There you go. So we've got uh, the message that I just saved in Slack. So given that we're appending a new message each time, you might want to put another couple of lines in and then uh, some dashes. So at least that way, each time um, you're separating the messages that are being appended to this note uh, with some lines and dashes. And once you're done there, like you just literally turn the zap on, uh, give it a name and you're done. So that is how you set up a basic workflow with Slack and Zapier. Now let's just have a look at a few cool examples uh, using different Slack triggers. So here's the one we just created, saved messages in Slack to Evernote. I think that's uh, quite cool if you ever want to keep a record of certain messages uh, that you save in Slack. So you just pu push them into your note taking app so you've always got a record. Another one here, uh, you can trigger a workflow every time a new file is added to Slack and then back it up in your Google Drive if you want a backup of every file that anyone has ever uploaded to uh, Slack. And you can get a bit more granular here. So you could say only save files that come into like a certain channel. So our web team channel or maybe from a certain person. So you don't have to save every single file, but yeah, so that, that can help you back up images or files that get uploaded to Slack. Now this next one's one of my favorites. So this is using the new pushed message in Slack. Now, once you have connected your Slack to Zapier, so when you actually connect to Slack for the first time, you should get this option now in Slack where you can click this button here and go push to Zapier. The first time it'll say this, so we don't actually have any workflows set up. So I wanna go back and show you this workflow. So we've got a new pushed message in Slack. There's not really anything to set up here, but maybe we wanna send this to our to-do list, whatever task management system you're using. So if I'm gonna use Trello, um, I've already connected my account. We look at the setup for this action. I'm gonna add uh, this message to my priority tasks on the today list. And so it's pretty cool. You get an option here to type some text into a text box and I'll show you this in a second. So that's going to be the name of the task and the description is going to be the actual message in Slack. So you have to set this up first using this uh, example data that comes out of uh, the new push message in Slack. So when you first test the trigger, it just gets this like random example, which isn't actually real. It's just in the back end of Zapier, I guess. So it's not a real pushed message, but it still allows you to um, map those fields into the name and description in Trello or whatever task manager you're using. Right, so now I'm gonna continue and we'll skip the test and then I'm gonna turn this zap on. Close that, if we jump back over to Slack now, this sh should work, right? So if I wanna go more actions and then push to Zapier, we can choose that zap that we just set up and then say, uh, do this thing. So that's the additional text that I was showing you is gonna go into Trello. So what I'm gonna do, uh, I might push this over and open up my Trello here and push. And there you go. So that's what we typed into the text box. And that is the message that I did it on. So you can see test there. So that's kind of cool, right? That means you can start workflows in Zapier just by pushing messages uh, in Slack. and that means you can have multiple workflows as well. So if you uh, want to push messages to add them to your task list or to save them as a note, you can have all kinds of different workflows set up and you just choose which workflow you wanna run here. Very, very cool feature. So that is one of my favorites. And finally, one of my favorites is when a reaction is added in Slack. So this is a similar thing. Uh, like now that there's the ability to push a message in Slack, this isn't so important anymore, but this used to be a really cool way to fire workflows based on messages in Slack, right? So adding reactions to them. So let's say back over at Slack, I can add a reaction and maybe I'll put the bug on it because this maybe someone sent me a message in Slack to say, hey, I think we've got a bug in our product, right? So I'll put a bug on it. And then 
this uh, that's how we trigger this workflow, right? So all I've said is uh, when a new reaction is added in Slack, specifically the bug reaction, uh, I don't care about the channel or who it's from. We test the trigger. I'll retest it here by going load more. And that should be that test message that I uh, just put the bug reaction on, right? So then in this case, we might go and add that as a bug uh, in our software development management tool. So you could do all kinds of things with this, right? So we have this feedback channel where when people give us feedback inside the app using a tool called Wootrick, it posts it directly in here. So if you get nice feedback like this, maybe you wanna add a heart reaction to it and then Zapier can say when a heart reaction is added, go and put that in uh, my testimonial file or go and specifically request a testimonial from this person uh, or just file it away for your own use. Just so you, maybe when you're feeling down, you want to go and have a look at all the nice feedback you got. Those are all things that you could do with a heart reaction. And likewise, you know, we've got some sad feedback here. So maybe if I put a, a sad face on it, then uh, we can trigger a workflow that says, send an email to this person to find out exactly what is wrong and, and what we can do better. And I've already done that with this person, right? So I just went and sent them a personal video to say, hey, what can we do better? And I could have improved my workflow there just by saying, when I put a sad face on this, add it to my to-do list to send this person a video requesting more information. So yeah, that is another cool way to automate some stuff with Slack. Now let's flip over to the action side of things uh, in Slack. So right now, everything we've looked at, Slack was the trigger. Now we're gonna have a look at Slack being the action. So if you jump back over to this page again, so we've had a look at a few different triggers. Now we're gonna have a look at some of these actions and how you can use them in your business. I'm not gonna go through the whole setup again because it is pretty similar. Like once you've set up, any of these kind of workflows, it's the same process. It's just using a different trigger, uh, you know, so in this case, this is a Google form. So we've got a trigger that says uh, when a new response is recorded in this Google form. So maybe this is like a, a new inquiry form from our client. You could use that to do a few things. I mean, you could send a message in Slack, right? You could just have a channel that says new client inquiries and all of your messages go into there so you know what's happening in your business. Or, you know, you could add a reminder. So in Slack, if you go slash remind, you can say like me at 1 p.m. to do something, right? And then it'll actually bounce this reminder back to you in the Slack bot channel at that time. So this is the same as creating one of those, but from Zapier. So you could do something like create an action that says two days later, make sure you follow up on that client just to make sure your team has done, you know, whatever they were supposed to do. So you can just set reminders in Slack using Zapier, which is quite cool. Uh, maybe when you have a new client come on board, so they've signed a proposal uh, that you've sent out to them, you can create a new channel in Slack, which says the company name, right? So that's gonna create a new channel in that sidebar in Slack. And then you might wanna invite some of your team into that uh, channel. So maybe your developers, if you're a development company, you might wanna add a designer, a project manager, and a developer all to that channel ready to go. Right now, as I record this, you can't invite people external to your organization, unfortunately. They have to be already invited to your Slack. This used to be available in Zapier and it got removed for some reason. By the time you're watching this, maybe it will be back. Maybe it'll be possible to invite external users. And if that's the case, then you could invite your client uh, into this channel uh, as well. So moving on, another idea. We've kind of covered this one already, just sending messages in Slack, like maybe every time you get a new client or get an inquiry form, you could send a message in Slack. But I also use this for weekly reminders, for example. So every week, this is just a basic schedule by Zapier trigger. So saying every week uh, on Friday at 4 p.m., send a message in Slack to say, don't forget your weekly reports and just to put it in the web team channel. You could also use this to send direct messages to people uh, and just for reminders or for yourself. Uh, you know, if you're operating out of Slack all the time, you might wanna send yourself a message to remember to do something. And finally, just a bit of a silly one. 
uh, we could use Zapier to set uh, our status in Slack, right? So that's the uh, the little bit that shows up next to your name. So uh, you can see always working, never sleeping there for uh, Mark on uh, my team. So that's the status he's set. Um, now I've got one set up here that just says every day uh, at 7 a.m. we are going to trigger this workflow. And I use uh, what's called a lookup table, which is found inside Zapier formatter under utilities. So um, formatter by Zapier under utilities. Uh, this is our lookup table. So if the day is Monday, we're looking up what day it is. And this is going to be our status uh, based on what day it is. And then we're just setting the status in Slack to say whatever uh, came out of that lookup table. So saying every day, depending on what day it is, choose a uh, status and then set it as my status and 420 minutes. It only lasts for two hours. So yeah, th just a bit of a silly one to end on there just to show you what's possible. Again, these are all just uh, ideas you can generate just by looking through this. You know, you can see here what kind of things are possible and then you can just start thinking about what kind of automations uh, you're going to create. That's it. I hope you have got some awesome ideas uh, for automating Slack using Zapier out of this video. Uh, yeah, I'd love to hear if you come up with anything cool or if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments below. And remember, if you'd like to learn more about how to automate your business with Zapier and just get more productive in general, hit that red subscribe button below and I'll see you in the next video.